a very capable adventure bag that's completely bypacking ready and at the same time feels light and reactive. This is the Rondo Bogan ST2 and in this review we are going to be talking about the frame set, the geometry, the components, the weight and some conclusions. Let's get into it. I like Rondo bikes because it's kind of something different in the market. This brand is from Poland and they specialize mostly on gravel bikes. I find they put a lot of attention on their designs and innovation like the adjustable geometry for example. This is my friend's bike and it's already been a little bit customized. He's changed the original seat pose for a dropper post. The saddle that comes with the bike is a WTB Volt and it's been changed as well as the handlebars. The bike comes with the Rondo Boomerang on 46 cm and he upgraded to the Ritchie Venture Max on 52 cm. The frame is built out of double butted chromoly Tange Champion. In case you don't know Tange, they are a Japanese manufacturer of high quality steel tubes and they've been doing that for over a hundred years so that's definitely something to like about this bike. There is an internal routing for a dropper post and all you need for a front derailleur as well. The fork is made out of carbon and it gives the possibility of changing the position of the wheel's axle and therefore the bike's geometry. That's what they call adjustable geometry. The tire clearance of this frame set is 2.1 inches on 29 inches wheels, which is a little bit less than some of the most popular drop bar 29er by packing bikes like the Konasutra LTD with 2.3 inches clearance or the Salsa Fargo at 3.0 inches clearance. In any case, 2.1 is more than enough for non-technical terrain like forest roads, gravel and double tracks and even slightly technical terrain as well. I would have loved just a tiny bit more like 2.2 just because on my Konasutra LTD I'm used to having the Terravel Sparwood on 2.2 and to me it's just the perfect versatile tire size for off-road drop bars but 2.1 is close enough. The frame set has triple mounts for anything cages on the upper and lower side of the diagonal tube plus on the fork blades. There is the traditional double mount on the seat tube and an additional one on the top of the top tube for installing a small bag. Something that I find extremely useful is these double mounts on the seat stays that I would personally use for water bottles so I could free the main triangle for a full frame bag and the fork for small panniers. A nice detail is this little handle for lifting the bike, especially useful for when the main triangle is being used for a full frame bag. The geometry. The front wheel through axle goes through a chip that can be flipped over and as a result it changes the height of the front end of the bike by a few millimeters. Thanks to Bike Insights, we can actually compare the two possible geometries and probably the most important numbers we should look at are a stack and reach for the position and the trail for the handling. This is where the adjustable geometry is going to have the most influence. The stack is the actual height of the head tube in relation to the bottom bracket. On the high position or relaxed position, the handlebar will be about 8 millimeters higher than in the lower configuration and the reach, which is the horizontal distance between the bottom bracket and the head tube, is 9 millimeters shorter than the more aggressive configuration. 8 and 9 millimeters don't seem to be numbers that would have a huge impact, but in my experience they can make a big difference in long distance rides. The higher stack and shorter reach will be more comfortable for long day rides and the more aggressive position will allow you to push a little bit harder and to get into a more aerodynamic position. The more comfortable position has a high trail number, so the handling will be very stable off-road at medium to high speeds. At lower speeds, the handling can feel a little slow with a tiny bit of wheel flop, so it has a mountain bikey feeling to it. 
On the more aggressive position, the trail is a bit lower at 68.9 mm, which is more like the handling of a regular gravel bike, I find. I was testing the bike in the more relaxed position, and when I tried to flip the chip to the more aggressive position, I found there wasn't enough room for the tires. So to be able to use the more aggressive configuration, then you would need to change the tires to maybe a sleek two inches tire or smaller. The rear end of the bike has 10 millimeters shorter chain stays than a similar bike like the Konas Ultra LTD and 15 millimeters shorter chain stays than a traditional touring bike like the Surly Disc Trucker. And as a result, the rear end does feel reactive considering the wheel size. I think this is also thanks to the relatively light and fast rolling Vittoria Terreno. I personally like reactive short chain stays and I think this bike is reactive when kicking off and accelerating and putting power on climbs. The components. The ST2 model comes with a SRAM Apex 1x11 drivetrain, which is great for gravel riding, but a little bit short for bikepacking, I find, considering the bike would be loaded and off-road. The ST1 model, on the other hand, comes with a 2x10 Shimano GRX drivetrain, which is higher end and has a great range of gears, but it's more expensive. The brakes are cable pulled with a hydraulic caliper and the brand is Fun One and the model Pro 5.0. This is a variation of the brakes that are supposed to come uh, with the bike, which are the Rever MCX Pro 5.0 FM. Either way, I think they are both the same quality level. To be honest, I don't have knowledge of this brand and I tested the brakes and they work great. The feeling is not too different from the higher end TRP High Road, but with a little less modulation. For the long run though, only time will tell. One discovery for me was the Vittoria Terreno XC on 29 2.1 inches. They are mountain bike tires designed mainly for dry terrain, although I tested them on a slightly wet terrain, not technical, and they did a pretty good job. The tires are under 700 grams and fast rolling, and I really like them. As I mentioned before, some components have already been changed on this particular bike. My friend and owner has uh, replaced the handlebars for wider Ritchie Venture Max on 52 centimeters, changed the saddle and installed a dropper seat post. The bike feels light and it is surprisingly light for a bike with this capability, big tire clearance, and by packing ready. This bike, size large, with the dropper post and without tubeless, is at 11.5 kilos. Conclusions. I think the Bogan is an excellent choice for a more performance-oriented type of bike packing, I think. It's lighter, more reactive, and with a more aggressive geometry than similar drop bar by packing bikes in the market like the Konasutra LTD, the Sinali Hobotleg Geo, or the Genesis Vagabond. The fact that the Rondo Bogan has less tire clearance than those other bikes also tells me that it's been designed for faster and lighter tires, whereas the other bikes are almost like mountain bikes with uh, drop bars. I also like the versatility of the bike. As a relatively light bike with the aggressive geometry setup and fast gravel tires, this bike can be super fun and performing gravel bike. Then flipping the chip on the fork and putting tires like this, the bike is ready for long trips on gravel roads, forest roads and double tracks and so on. Flipping the chip on the fork takes about half an hour. It's relatively easy, but you do have to change the brake caliper adapter, which means every time there will be some adjustments to do. I personally would change it only once or twice per year, like for example, aggressive for the winter shorter rides and chill position for the summer longer trips. 
The Bogan ST2 can be found online for about 2200 euros. That's not bad for a very interesting frame set with a carbon fork and a good quality entry level drivetrain like the SRAM Apex. The brake caliper are from a brand that's a little unknown, but it doesn't mean they won't last a number of years. It also depends on how much you ride and your riding style. What I think the Bogan ST2 would be less ideal is for heavy duty bikepacking, meaning heavily loaded in areas with a lot of elevation. In that case, I would consider going for the Bogan ST1 that offers a much wider range of gears and a higher end, more reliable drivetrain and brakes, but with a price difference of about five to six hundred euros. For the fit, I'm one meter eighty-three with an eighty-seven centimeters in seam, and the eighty millimeters stock stem was too long for me. For a perfect fit. I would need to swap it for a 40 or 50 millimeters one. Otherwise, the size large was perfect. I hope there was some value for you in this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.